Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo group. This tutorial is an adaptation of a Photoshop tutorial done by Spoon Graphics and it is about how to create textures and they've done it for Photoshop and Illustrator um, I'm only adapting the first part of this, which is making um, some textures that you can use as a sort of overlays to add a bit of grunge or what have you to your images. Um, part two of this particular um, tutorial is about doing the same sort of thing and then but making sort of tiles out of them so you can make a, a much larger pattern. And the last bit is about making vector textures for Illustrator. I've not done the second two parts, I've just done the first part. But I have also added a little bit extra about making some brush tips from these um, textures that I'm going to show you. I will add a link to this so you can watch the proper video yourself and maybe get ideas on how to um, adapt part two and part three of the video for use in Affinity Photo. So, let me go back. What we I'm going to do is I'm, I've tried it twice so far on this um, beach uh, scene which I took, which is just sand and some rocks. And from that I've made a black and white image and then a white on black image and then a PNG version which is the black on a empty background um, so you could put it um, on top of an image and the image will show through and I've also did a very similar thing with this rock image I've done three different versions of that and this time I'm going to try it with this pebble image um, so these are the that was the beach image that I tried and that was the rock image and this would be the pebble one I've not tried this one yet so I myself don't know how this is going to turn out um, but we will see and lastly like I said I have made some brushes out of those two that I have already done so if I come down to let's see I've got here beach texture, rock texture and another rock texture and another beach texture. So let me just take this um, rock texture and let me increase the size of this. So that is the texture I got from the rock and the beach one was that. So we will, when I've done this we'll be able to see what the pebbles one will look like. So let me just come off of this tool for a minute, get it out of the way. And I'll come to this pebbles texture and this is the one that I'm going to try it on. Now when you're out and about you, know, you can take pictures you know, on your camera phone, you know, your proper cameras of any texture that you like, and you, you know, like you like the look of and then you can either use them as they are, as overlays or as backgrounds, or you can then adapt them like we're going to do here and have them again as sort of overlays to help grunge up an image or what have you, and or make brush tips like we're going to do a bit, little bit later. So once you have the texture Im uh, image that you want, first thing you need to do is to duplicate it twice. So I'm just going to right click on here and do duplicate or you can do control and J. So I'll click it there once and then do control and J once. So I have two versions of that. I'm going to just hide the top image for now and highlight the middle one. And then I'm going to come up to filters, blur and then average and it will calculate an average for this picture 
uh, an average color for this picture from all the colors that were in it and it would invariably be a gray color so this is the color that for that so I will now re-highlight this top layer and I will make it visible and then I'm going to come up to filters sharpen high pass now we need a, a fairly high high pass radius I'm going for around the 50 mark um, a lot of it will depend on in fact 50 is what I used on the last one I'll maybe lower this down so it's not so sharp let's go with around that 19 and then change the blending mode and click apply change the blending mode to linear light right so once I've done that I can if I hold down the shift key I will then click on that middle layer so both of those are highlighted and then I will right click and group those together next I'm going to add a levels adjustment so I'm going to click on this icon down here you can either do it from the adjustments tab or from this icon and pick levels and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to move the white level slider pretty much near to the middle so it goes very white and we lose a lot of the sort of definition in the edges I'm going to move the black level slider to the right just to sort of highlight some of the darker edges and you can move the gamma slider to probably probably best to go towards the left just to again lose some of those edges so it's not so well defined so I'll then close that and I'm going to click on this icon and drag it down and bring it into this group so just bring it down to the blue line appears so that is now part of that group I now want to get rid of all the color that is in this image so again I'm going to come to there are a number of ways you're doing this but I'm, but I'm just going to come to the adjustment black and white and then just bring some of these sliders down to get rid of any color that might be left have it down there and then again just close that and that should have automatically put that in the group that was highlighted so I can now save this um, as it stands so I will come to file export and we're going to go for JPEG and I'm going to call this although it's quite black and white it, it, I'm going to call this white um, save now for this next part I, I do need to make a, a different layer for this um, I'm going to, so I'm going to right click this and merge visible so it will make a copy of that layer there and then I'm going to come to layer and invert so I now have a reversed negative image of that so again I'm going to save that or export it I should say so this one I'm going to call this one black
So now I want to make the PNG version of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the channels tab down here and I'm going to you could probably use any of these channels but I'm going to pick the blue one and I'm going to right click on that and come to load to pixel selection and it should select all this or most of the black areas and then I'm going to hide all the layers that are currently selected and I'm going to come up to layers new fill layer and I'm going to change the color of that to black like so and then I'm going to press control and D to get rid of the selection area and then I'm going to export this as a PNG and a selection without background and then just save that so hopefully now if I make a new layer let me just go file no sorry new layer and I will fill this with a colour let's try yellow then drag this down below there as you can see the yellow is showing through the areas that are actually blank or invisible um, so only the black is saved to the PNG file so you could use it in that way so let me just hide that so technically you now have three four, four textures you've got the original texture and you've got a black and or white texture that you can use to add as an overlay and change the blending mode of that overlay to adapt to the image you're using and you've also got a PNG version that has got um, a blank background so the whatever you put it on will show through so now I need to make a brush tip from that so let me get rid of let me close all these down So we left with this one here. So let's come to the brushes, select the brush tool. And it probably would help if you make a new category for for whichever ones you make. You can do that by the icon up here in the top right. You right click on that. You can do create new category. I think by default it will just call it brushes. And once you've done that you can then come back to this menu and re rename that category like I did here I called it Carl's texture brushes and once you have that open any brushes you make will then be entered into this category so again coming back to this menu now you can make new image brush and or new intensity brush now I'm not 100% certain what the major differences are between an image brush and an intensity brush but what I have found is that an image brush will only sort of let you do it in black um, on the brush tip whereas an intensity brush will allow you to change the color but I'm going to make one of each so you just click on new image brush and I'll come to the pebbles and then just click open and it will add that new brush to the category so 
So I'll then come back to this one and make it new intensity brush. Again, I'll pick pebbles and open. And now I have two new brushes added, pebbles and pebbles too. So this is the um, image brush. Let me just increase the size of that a bit. So you can see that is what that looks like. But if I come to the color, whatever color I pick it is still doing it in black. But if I do the intensity brush, as you can see, it's already set up in the different color that has been picked. So there I have two new brush tips that you could use. So you, from one image, you've got three new textures and two new brush tips. Um, I know it's not necessarily an earth shattering concept and you may not use it that much, but it is quite a clever way of getting yourself some new textures to help grunge up your images or to use as paintbrushes. I mean this pebble one may not be that much use as a as a brush tip but the um, say the beak texture one I made previously I mean that might be quite good for adding a bit of texture in certain images and of course you can then transfer these brushes into designer as well. So I hope that has been of some use to some people. Thank you for watching and goodbye.